Hello, welcome to Oxford Heirlooms. In this video, we're going to be sewing the neckband onto the bishop neckline of the dress. Now, I have already completed one, and I wanted to mention, notice how my pleats are all nice and neat all along the top. Now, I have still not taken out my top two pleating threads, but I'll do that in a minute. Okay, also notice how my neckband is very small. It's not really wide. Um, as I measure this, the neckband turns out to be um, about 3 sixteenths or maybe a scant quarter of an inch um, wide. I don't like wide neckbands, and I don't like them to where the bias kind of ends up having slanty lines all over it either. So let me show you how I did this. I've got the second dress to work on. And what I did preliminarily, my neckband piece, as I measure it, is an inch and a half wide. So I folded it in half and I pressed it. I also folded it in half again and I made a little blue mark at the very center front of the neckline. Now keep in mind, my first pleating row was one half of a needle space on the pleater away from the top edge of the, of the, of the dress. And I back smocked that with a row of cable stitch. Can you see that? Okay, now the reason I do that is the cable, the back smocking, holds the pleats neatly into place when I go to sew them in. So I still have my um, center front of the garment marked with my blue fabric marking pen. So I'm going to line up the blue mark on the neckband with the blue mark on the dress, and I'm going to put a pin into place. Then I'm going to go out to one side. This is the side where the placket stays inside. Now, this is why it was very important to tie these top two pleating threads off to where they're the same size as the neckband piece. Okay, so I'm going to overlap my neckband by about one quarter of an inch. This is the side where the buttons will go, so the placket... Um, is folded outward. Now I'm going to put a pin into place and then I'm going to come back to the center front. Let's see. I need to ease my pleats into place just going along the neckline. Just lining the neckband up with the top of the dress and just ease those pleats into place. You know, the neckband itself is on, cut on a bias, so it'll stretch just a little bit. Just put a few pins in there to hold the pleats into place. Okay, so I've got one side pinned where it's neatly on. It's centered at the center front, and the neckband hangs over about a quarter of an inch on this right-hand side. Now, I'm going to go to the other end. Now, this is the side where the buttonholes are supposed to be, so I need to fold my placket to the inside. And once again, I'm going to line up my neckband piece and have it hang over about one quarter of an inch on that end, and I'm gonna put a pin into place. Okay, then I'm gonna come back to the center, and I'm gonna to begin to ease those pleats along the neckband and pin it into place. Got some fuzzy threads up here, but after I sew it, I'll trim my fuzzy threads before I fold the neckband over to hand sew it. Now, if you did not, if you, if you 
tied your neckband bigger or your top two pleating threads bigger than the neckband, you can always um, tie it a little bit tighter. But if you tied it too small, um, I'm not really sure if I have a way to help you with that. Okay, now from the cape, from the pleat side, you don't want the pleats to run on top of the feed dogs on the sewing machine. You want the presser foot to ride over the top of the pleats. So what I'm gonna do, is you see that pleating line? I'm gonna sew a seam immediately to the right of that top cable row. Just take my pins out as I come to them. Don't go real fast. Okay, now the reason we're sewing right to the right of that pleating row, of the cable row, is we don't want to pierce that top pleating thread. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit and make this. This also makes the top seam pretty small. see all my fuzzies hanging out here to the right, but I'll trim those in a minute. But just continue to sew immediately, I mean really immediately, right to the right of that top cable row, because it's holding the pleats together. But sewing to the right keeps us from piercing the pleating thread gives us a tiny little seam. There. Let me clip my threads. Okay, now with my embroidery scissors, all these little fuzzies that are at the top of the neckline, I'm gonna just trim. Now, I'm not trimming the neckline itself. I'm just trimming away the little fuzzies so that they won't poke out. In a minute, I'm going to um, pin my neckband into place so that I can whip stitch it and close it up. Just trim away the little fuzzies so that it's nice and neat. There we go. Okay, now starting, I lock, for some reason I always start at the right hand end and if you will fold that neckband up, okay, well we can kind of inspect this real quickly. As we look at the pleats going all along the neckline, they're nice and neat and evenly spaced. And our pleating thread, if I pull it, it's still, I didn't pierce it with that seam line, so it's it's still loot. well, I mean, it's still installed, but it's not caught in the thread. Okay, so I have folded this up. Now what I'm gonna do, so that I have a nice, neat edge, I'm gonna fold 
this right side in by about a quarter of an inch and then fold it down on top of itself. And that gives us a nice, neat corner with no little raggedy threads hanging out of it. So I'm gonna put a pin into place. And then just all along the neckband, I'm gonna pin the neckband into place. Okay, this will take me a minute to get this all pinned, so I'll be right back. Okay, I've got that pinned all along the inside, and as I inspect it from the outside, you can see I have a very small, neat neckband. Okay, now using a needle and thread, I'm going to bring my thread up behind the placket and come in and begin to tack that neckband into place. Just using some very small stitches, about 3 sixteenths of an inch apart. The smaller your stitches, the neater the neckband will lie. Don't take your pin out until I push the head of the pin all the way down in. But don't take the pin out until you actually get to the head of the pin. Okay, now I've caught up with the head of that pin, so I'll take it out push my next one all the way down, and just continue to tack this neckband into place along the inside neck edge using tiny little stitches. Like I said, about 3 sixteenths of an inch is big enough. Okay, so this so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, this will take me a minute to get this tacked down all the way along the neckband, so I'll be right back. Okay, I've got that neckband whipped stitched into place, and as you can see, it makes for a very small little neckline, and when I measure it, once again, it's about 3 sixteenths um, of an inch wide. I just... Um, I don't like really wide neckbands. That's just a personal preference of mine. So it, the, the smaller I can make it, the happier I am. Now the last thing I need to do is on one side, I'm gonna pull my two pleating threads out, clip one end, and then I can go to the other end and simply just pull it out. And since I didn't sew on it, it comes out real nicely, and I'll do that on the other dress also. But sewing the little neckbands onto the dresses was what we were doing today and trying to get a nice, neat neckline. Now, what I'll do off camera um, before the next video is I need to come back and do this top smocking row. Um, it'll be a two-step trellis wave creating little diamonds along the top of the neckband but um it's it's better or easier to smock that top row after you get the neckband into place than it is to try to smock it ahead of time and hope that you don't accidentally get too far away from it or catch it in the seam so the neckband um, was what we were doing today. Thank you.